options. And sources tell me that Kevin Durant is seriously mulling his future options. He's been monitoring the situation over the last several weeks. And there's an expectation that Kyrie Irving will now proceed shortly into finding a new home via an opt-in and trade potential situation. And there are, are several teams that he would likely consider. Several teams across the league here that would, of course, love to have him. We've been making a lot of content on Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant recently, and rightfully so. This situation's absolutely insane, and it could go in a plethora of different directions. This is a compilation of everything you need to know to keep yourself up to date on the Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving saga. Now, before we get to the content, make sure you drop a like, subscribe, and turn on our notifications to help the channel grow. And if you think I talk way too much in these videos, I make shorter versions of this content on my Instagram and on my TikTok account. Now that we get all of that out of the way, cue the intro. So yeah, there's leverage here, but I also think the Lakers noise, you know, again, really tough to pull off. It, it's somewhat substantive there. Like you've got people within the league actually thinking, man, like I think you might find a way to, to get back with LeBron. And you know, I think LeBron would, would open that door and we'll see if they can pull it off. My check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? I highly recommend for you to go check out my previous video on this topic. It's the one with Kevin Durant with the gigantic googly eyes. Probably one of my favorite edits that I've made so far. My Los Angeles Lakers absolutely shattered the internet when they decided to trade for the number 35 pick in the NBA draft. Let's go, we finally did something. Rejoice, Laker fans. Jokes aside, here's what's going down with KD and Kyrie. Currently, Kyrie Irving and the Brooklyn Nets are at an impasse in regards to his contract. Now, the reason being is that the Brooklyn Nets feel like they didn't get the adequate return on their investment in regards to Kyrie Irving, and we've mentioned that before in our previous videos. So far in three seasons with the Brooklyn Nets, Kyrie Irving has played less games than he did in two seasons seasons with the Boston Celtics and whenever he does play he's an absolutely remarkable player but that's the problem how often is he going to play now the Brooklyn Nets are trying to use this as leverage in a contract negotiation with Kyrie Irving and I've said in previous videos I kind of see where they're coming from I mean I understand not wanting to take the vaccine and I respect that but when you add that to the fact that Kyrie Irving was taking time off during his second season with the Brooklyn Nets already and then of course his first season with the Brooklyn Nets I'm willing to kind of write off because he was waiting for Kevin Durant to get healthy. I could understand where the Brooklyn Nets are coming from in this situation. Now, here's where things get interesting. It appears as though Kyrie Irving and the Brooklyn Nets are playing a gigantic game of chicken. The Brooklyn Nets are interested in a shorter term contract with Kyrie Irving, whether it's in the form of a two year, $42 million per year deal, or just him opting in for one year and $36 million. Kyrie Irving, on the other hand, just wants to be paid as normal. And the Brooklyn Nets leverage in this instance is the fact that there aren't really a lot of teams that could pursue Kyrie Irving. I mean, the Detroit Pistons recently entered the race as a result of them just trading Jeremy Grant, but I don't think the Detroit Pistons are interested in Kyrie, and I don't think Kyrie's interested in Detroit, with all due respect to Detroit. This leaves us with Kyrie Irving's leverage. Kyrie Irving's leverage is the fact that he understands that if he leaves, there's a good chance that Kevin Durant will leave. Now, whether this has to do with the fact that they're buddy-buddy, or the fact that Kevin Durant just understands that he's going to have a significant worst team if Kyrie Irving leaves is a completely different conversation. We discussed in our last video whether KD and Kyrie are actually truly boys. But here's what's the most shocking of all. We got an update from Champ Sharanya and Adrian Wojnowski. It's a rare collab where it seemed like both of these individuals' tweets were complimenting one another. So here's what we have. The very first thing that we got was from Shams himself saying that according to his sources, Kevin Durant is monitoring the Brooklyn Nets situation and is considering options with his future. This now opens the path for Kyrie Irving to proceed on finding a new home via opt-in and trade. Bro, what I don't understand is the superstars that are under contract until the 2026 season coming out and saying, yeah, 
I'm considering my options for the future. You're under contract for four more years. I don't know how that works. Now, Kyrie Irving, on the other hand, it just seems like this delusion has gone to a new level. And bear in mind, I'm a Laker fan, okay? I understand that we freaking stink. I understand that with our current roster, there is no hope whatsoever. If Kyrie Irving somehow comes over to the Lakers, we have infinitely more hope. But here's the difference between me and most other Laker fans that are lurking on Twitter. I'm actually realistic about what I think can happen. This doesn't sound like something that makes a lot of sense. Look at what Woj says, okay? ESPN sources. If Kyrie Irving can't reach an agreement to stay with Brooklyn, he has a list of teams that he'd like them to consider on sign and trades, including the Lakers, Clippers, Knicks, Heat, Mavs, and 76ers. Now, here's the wild thing. None of these teams have the cap space to sign him without the Brooklyn Nets helping him. Now, these are teams teams that Irving has interest in, but he isn't necessarily a priority for all of them. I don't understand the world we're living in, man. We've gotten to the point where superstars are trying to transcend their contractual obligations and trying to force trades despite it not making sense via the salary cap. Here's the wild thing. The fact that the Philadelphia 76ers are on that list, I'm just trying to think, is Kyrie Irving interested in playing with James Harden again? Would James Harden be interested in teaming up with Kyrie Irving again? Again, my interpretation of their relationship, at least during their duration on the Brooklyn Nets, is they just weren't on the same page in regards to the trajectory of their careers. And it makes a lot of sense. This is just my own speculation at this point. Kyrie Irving and James Harden have both had completely different careers. James Harden has achieved excellent individual success, whereas Kyrie Irving has won a championship in astounding fashion and was a huge reason why the Cleveland Cavaliers won a championship against the greatest regular season team of of all time. James Harden is still chasing his ring, but he's amassed significant individual accolades. And I said this about Kevin Durant as well. Kevin Durant probably feels like he really needs to win a championship that doesn't have anything to do with the Golden State Warriors. And I'm not going to sit here and say Kevin Durant's rings don't count because 20 years down the line, nobody's going to remember the fashion that Kevin Durant got his rings. It's not going to be as big of a deal 20 years down the line as it is now. And that's just me being honest with you. I mean, I'm not saying this is necessary the same thing. And I'm only just using this as an example because this happened a decade ago. But do we look at LeBron James's first ring with the Miami Heat and look down upon it as a result of him going to South Beach to win his first ring? Yes, I understand the reason why he did it. The Cleveland Cavaliers weren't putting him in a situation to succeed and weren't putting good pieces around him so he could win a championship. But at the time, you have to understand that everybody was absolutely livid with the fact that LeBron James went to the Miami Heat to win a championship, and they were actually saying that that championship should not count. Now, 10 years down the line, of course, LeBron James has had a phenomenal career where he's won championships with the Lakers, Cavaliers, and the Heat, so no one's really using that argument anymore, but I'm just trying to say as time progresses on, people don't look at specific championships and say that doesn't count for X and Y reasons. Do we look at Hakeem Olajuwon's rings and say that they don't count because Michael Jordan wasn't there to challenge him? But I digress. If you remember a few days ago, and I can understand that it's very difficult to keep track of all of these reports because, well, there's so much information and a lot of the insiders that we trust the most, even the Woges and the Shams of the industry, are conflicting with one another. But if you remember, one of the very first reports in regards to this entire saga was from Adrian Wojnowski. It was an ESPN Plus article that your boy paid a little extra for. It's exclusive content, but I wanted to make sure I could bring it to you guys. So make sure you drop a like for your boy. But Adrian Wojnowski said in this article, there are teams that are rooting for Kyrie Irving to opt out and walk away from the Brooklyn Nets, believing that it would give them a chance to cobble together trade packages to acquire Kevin Durant. As much as Durant asking out hangs over the Nets, there's also the reality that four years on his contract will mean he has little, if any, voice on when or where he would be traded. This will be a small market team's dream, robbing a Goliath of an MVP level talent whose contractual circumstances would leave him little choice but to play for them. Honestly, if I'm the Brooklyn Nets at this point, man, I said this when they acquired Ben Simmons and they're very lucky that they acquired Ben Simmons because at least they have someone they could build around. I know Ben Simmons has been getting memed mercilessly, but trading Kevin Durant, getting a bunch of first round picks if Kyrie Irving leaves isn't necessarily the worst case scenario. Can you imagine if Kevin Durant ends up getting traded?
traded to the OKC Thunder for a bunch of first round picks in the future, which if you're an OKC Thunder fan, let me know if that's something you'd want to see. But here's the issue with this dream scenario. Adrian Wojnarowski said during draft day that Kevin Durant isn't necessarily going to ask for a trade just because Kyrie Irving wants to leave. And here, we'll show you the clip from Adrian Wojnarowski. And we even have a podcast clip where Kevin Durant addresses this situation as well. Durant has not told the Nets that if Kyrie leaves, that that means he's going to ask for a trade. Certainly, the Nets are aware of the relationship, the connection, uh, the affinity that Kevin Durant has for Kyrie Irving. You know, and that's why they've been working to try to see if they can come up with a deal that meets both what Kyrie Irving is willing to do and what the Nets are willing to do. Kevin Durant's happiness, how he looks at the future of this team, you know, certainly it is a part of that Kyrie Irving negotiation. Now, at the same time, you have to wonder if Kyrie Irving and the Brooklyn Nets are playing a gigantic game of chicken. Bear in mind that Shams Tranya actually expects Kyrie Irving to find a new team by opting in and requesting a trade. Now, if this was to happen, then Kevin Durant's going to be stuck on a team that essentially only has like $10 million in salary cap space in order to add additional role players, which with him and Ben Simmons and the fact that they have some expiring contracts and the fact that they weren't very deep to begin with, it's a little concerning to see what the future is going to look like for KD if he stays on the Brooklyn Nets. I understand that winning a championship not on the Warriors is very crucial to Kevin Durant for his legacy, and I honestly can't blame him at this point. But it seems like this game of chicken between Kyrie Irving and the Brooklyn Nets is getting better and better. I mean, you have the owner of the Brooklyn Nets throwing the ultimate shade at Kyrie Irving, liking a tweet that said, just drove by Sean Mark's exit on my way to work. I didn't see white smoke, but I know that man is cooking. And Sean Marks, we trust. Team and culture is greater than any one player excited to get back to Nets basketball. So liking a tweet that says team and culture is more important than any one player speaks volumes about the Brooklyn Nets. And it sounds like Joseph Tsai is on the same exact page as Sean Marks was when he sounded skeptical about bringing back Kyrie Irving. I think we know what we're looking for. You know, we're looking for guys that want to come in here, be part of something bigger than themselves, um, play selfless, play team basketball, and be available. And that goes not only for Kyrie, but for, for everybody here. So you might be wondering how Kevin Durant feels about all this. I mean, it speaks volumes. I understand that KD didn't necessarily say he's going to demand a trade, but if Kevin Durant isn't recruiting to the Brooklyn Nets, that is saying something. That's a huge sign that something's about to go down with Kevin Durant as well. And I think that's the biggest sign Sign that Kevin Durant might be heading out. If he was recruiting to the Nets, then I'd say, okay, this is all BS and we don't need to be worried about it. But Kevin Durant recently has been very proud of the fact that he's part of the new media. And he went on the Etcetera's podcast in a question posed by Eddie Gonzalez and actually discussed how he feels about the Kyrie Irving situation. People think yeah. your involvement is everything. There's no involvement at all. I mean, I can't be involved with, this is this man's livelihood, mm -hmm. you know, this is, uh, this is much bigger than me, you know, this is, uh, being a free agent is one of the most important times in, in your career, you know, so, you know, you can't be swayed by anybody else, and so I just do me and wait for the time. Here's the thing, man. And he says a lot more about the situation, but I respect the fact that Kevin Durant is saying that this is Kyrie Irving's livelihood and he needs to respect that. But in a scenario, which I don't think is going to happen, but in a scenario where Kyrie Irving opts in and he gets traded to another team, getting paid $36 million for the year, and then gets traded to another team or takes less money to be on a completely different team. That doesn't necessarily have much to do with livelihood. He's getting paid less to leave the current situation situation that he's in that involves you. I don't necessarily know if I agree with KD on this point because it's more than livelihood. This could actually be a little personal. I'm not saying Kyrie and KD dislike each other, but it's a little bit more than just livelihood and dollar bills at play here. I mean, there's nothing can happen right now. I, mean, I don't think he can make a decision on opting yeah. out until 29th, I think. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's the official day. Wednesday, we'll know whether or not Kyrie Irving wants to opt out, but you also have to bear in mind he's expected to opt in and pursue a trade. I mean, I think by the 29th, we're either vaguely going to know what Kyrie Irving's plan is, or we're going to have a definitive answer because June 30th is when things are about to hit the fan. That's when free agency starts to go down and everyone starts tampering with one another. It's a, it's a weird place for you because obviously that's a friendship that transcends all of this, you yeah. know, and a brotherhood 
and it's not for you. I think that's a part of a lot of people misunderstand. Like it's not for you to direct his career. Exactly. And you know, in most real world situations, that would be our approach. I've watched, you know, somebody we worked with, where you said, "Hey, you have to do what's best for you." Our, our friend Pearson. Yeah. That ended up being somewhere else, and that yo, we still love, we still just exactly. like friends. You exactly. know what I mean? And it's like. I think it's hard for people to understand or accept, but that's also real life. Yeah, I mean, that's why I met with it. I mean, and, and you know, you know, basketball is obviously the most important thing, but you know, I try not to let that get in the way of somebody else's personal decisions. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And, you know, it's just, but like I said, whatever happens, the friendship will still be there. Now, if you remember in my previous video, I mentioned a report that said that Kyrie and Katie are friends, but they're not as close as everyone thinks they are. And maybe that was a result of their relationship together over the past three years, whenever friends enter into a partnership together and their careers are tied with one another, maybe they aren't as close anymore. Well, Katie actually addressed that as well, saying that that's where I'm at with it. Basketball is obviously the most important thing, but I try not to let that get in the way of somebody else's personal decision. Like I said, whatever happens, the friendship will still be there. I feel like Kevin Durant's a little bit more sensitive on this situation because if he was more aggressive with Kyrie Irving potentially leaving, well, that would make him a gigantic hypocrite with all due respect. Katie also discussed the reports surrounding him and Kyrie Irving saying that it's just reports, you know, that go around this time. The draft, the finals just ended. You just got to keep the dialogue going and keep the engagement going. So obviously it's an interesting topic. There's a lot going on with our team. Uncertain with Ben not playing with us, us being swept in the playoffs, Kyrie's situation being a free agent. So there's a lot of certainty with our team. I understand why there's so much noise around us, but as individuals, you control what you can. If the time's right, everything will work out for itself. So, so what I'm getting from all this is there are so many scenarios that could happen for the Brooklyn Nets this summer. It seems like Kevin Durant is kind of setting the stages for his departure, but his departure isn't something that's guaranteed. If he does leave Brooklyn Nets fans, I want you to bear in mind, it's a happy scenario for you guys because if Kevin Durant does leave, it means that you guys got some sort of offer that you cannot refuse that would put you in a really good situation to start your rebuild. Very similarly to what happened to the OKC Thunder during the summer following the infamous Damian Lillard buzzer beater that ended their season. They got an offer that they couldn't refuse for Paul George and as a result, they said, okay, this trade package for Paul George is way too good of an opportunity to pass up. We're set up to get a ton of draft capital moving forward into the future, and we get to punt on a core of Russell Westbrook and Paul George that, with all due respect, isn't necessarily capable of winning a championship. And they were able to trade Russell Westbrook for Chris Paul. They were able to trade Chris Paul for more assets. And now memes about the OKC Thunder just constantly hoarding draft picks have become a thing in the NBA. So if Kevin Durant does get traded, it would be a scenario like that. You wouldn't be left empty handed because the man is under contract until the 2026 season. Even furthermore, and I don't want to disrespect Kevin Durant at all whatsoever because I think he's one of the most transcendent scorers of all time, but you also have to bear in mind that Kevin Durant's 34 years old and he just recovered from an Achilles tear not too long ago. So the question about how durable he's going to be moving forward and how sustainable his level of production is going to be is something that you have to bear in mind. Now, we have seen players extend their careers way longer than I expected them to. I mean, players like Chris Paul and LeBron James still incredibly productive late into their 30s. But if you do get the OKC Thunder to give up a plethora of first round picks and you could kickstart your rebuild and at the same time, you could trade Kyrie Irving to a different destination and get yourself some assets, maybe from like the Los Angeles Clippers who have a lot of good pieces that you could trade to contending teams for additional capital moving forward. If culture is that big of a deal to you, then that's a nice way to kickstart a rebuild and to make sure that you could instill a winning culture. So 
let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about all this, man. I know it's a lot of information. Every single Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving video is just one gigantic rabbit hole that we just have to sift through, but I gotta admit, it's an entertaining situation with a lot of different outcomes, and I can't wait to see what happens. We're gonna be making a lot more videos on this and the NBA draft and free agency moving forward. I have my friend's bachelor party the weekend of free agency, but I just went out and dropped a ton of money on a crazy laptop so I can make sure I'm pumping out content while I'm there. Make sure you're subscribed and turn on our notifications to help the channel grow. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.